whoever invited you tonight is part of our Juice Plus community. And that community is people who are like-minded. They're just uh, working to help other people get healthy, make simple changes one at a time. And I'm one of your hosts, Sharon Farrar, and I've been with the company and the community for 21 years. It's totally changed my health over time, and you're gonna hear from some awesome ladies who I handpicked because they are super inspirational. I like that smile, Alicia, because um, I love hearing from them. And if you watch them on social media, they are making simple changes all the time. And um, even our team name that we're on is called Team Transformers because we are transforming ourselves and we're transforming other people um, as far as their health and their quality of life and um, with our community. So anyway, it's exciting. And so tonight I wanna to share with you some pictures of who we have in store for our um, Love Yourself event. Um, first there's Alicia and she is, um, hold on, here we go. She is a cancer survivor, okay? She got cancer when she was 21. She's gonna tell you about that. So you can look at her pictures while I tell you a little bit about her. And then I'm going to show you Vela's picture and tell you a little bit about her. And then that way um, we could get that under, under our belts. All right. Alicia is a graduate of Florida International University where she received a BA in psychology. Her passion in helping others initially led her to work within the mental health care industry, providing therapy to young children and counseling teenagers. She's certified in hypnotherapy, neuro-linguistic programming, emotional freedom technique, it's like you want to know so much more about what is all this, right? Um, from She's got a lot of certifications, time techniques, life and success coaching. Her current passion is to help others who are aspiring mompreneurs achieve their business goals while still managing family responsibilities. She resides in Florida, South Florida, right around the block from me pretty much. She's a proud wife and mother to three healthy children. She's part of the Juice Plus community whose mission aligns with hers, and that's to inspire healthy living. And she's going to be talking about self-love, okay? She's going to give us awesome advice. I was able to preview that, so thank you, Alicia. I'm excited about that. Now, Vela, if you've ever heard Vela, you're excited to hear more of Vela because you never know what you're going to get with Vela, but it's always good. She's super inspirational. She Nobody wants to follow her. That's why she's after <laughs> Sorry, Alicia, but she's at the end. Well, actually, I think I have to follow her. Um, but anyway, I, to close, I'll have to follow her. But she is super inspirational, um, and she has been through a lot. You know, she is a stroke and heart attack survivor, and she's going to share her story, too. She's a loving wife and mother that believes in wholeness and that it starts with self-care, authentic relationships, and being proactive. She is a heart and stroke warrior and is an American Heart Association and American Diabetes Association ambassador for the campaign No Diabetes by Heart. So she's involved in diabetes and heart, which is really neat. So she's a health advocate. She has a, a Heart Sisters um, group which promotes healthy living. She's a Juice Plus representative. She's certified in plant-based nutrition and she's a life coach, okay? She's passionate about reclaiming God's glory of living, mind, body, soul, and spirit. And this perspective is a winning strategy to declare the amazing works of God and what he has done in and through her. I think both of these ladies are very thankful that they're still with us after their close calls and so I'm excited to um, help them to share their stories tonight. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen, stop sharing me. Um, so I'm going to make sure I didn't miss anything on that. Now we are going to do a couple raffles. And so um, what we're going to do is I'm just going to look at the participant list, um, number it, and go to random.org. And we're going to pick a couple of winners um, just for fun. And we said that it was for anybody who um, wore red. So let's see in the gallery, if you wore your red today for heart month and for love month, right? Did you guys wear your red? It's okay. You're all going to be in the drawing. It's okay. I see you, Juanita. She's laughing. Okay. I saw that. That's good. Um, anyway, but we're all um, going to be in the drawing. So I just, I like looking at all you guys. Hi, everybody. Now I got to see you. All right. So we're going to go to Alicia. 
all right? And she's going to share with us some awesome ways of loving ourselves. And you're going to ask them at one point what they do to treat themselves and stuff like that. Okay, so I'm not going to ask them in the chat. You'll ask them later. Okay, here we go. You guys can be thinking of that. Here's Alicia McDonald. Go ahead, Alicia. All right. Well, thank you. Let me go ahead and share my screen as well. Okay, here we go. All right. Can you all see that? Awesome. All right. So thank you so much, Sharon. I'm super honored to be one of your um, guest speakers in today's presentation. And um, I'm going to jump in and share a little bit about my story. Um, close to 17 years ago, I was a brand new university grad. I was also a new single mother at age 21 and received the tragic news of being diagnosed with non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, which is a form of cancer. And back then, I really thought I was living a healthy lifestyle. I was exercising, occasionally replacing my carbs for salads, reducing my sugar intake, eliminating soda. But in reality, I was making much more poor food choices and experiencing life stressors, which led to cancer. I mean, I was working two jobs, pregnant, finishing my bachelor's degree in senior year. I mean, I was going through it all and then facing the reality that I was going to be a single mother. So I triumphed over cancer. And about two years ago, I met Michelle Fletcher at an Earth Day event in Sunrise. And coincidentally, a girlfriend of mine was sitting with Michelle, talking with her, and I walk into the line of three in one or one in three people will be diagnosed with cancer at some point of their lives. Guess what? There was three of us standing at the table and I said, oh, that was me at 21 years old. And what was so amazing is that that day, she shared a very simple way to flood my body with over 30 fruits and vegetables every single day. Now I'm healthy and an active wife of three very healthy children also consuming adequate nutrients to protect their bodies from the inside out. And I pray that I can continue to teach my family and friends from my past hardships how to take charge of their health and avoid many illnesses through proper nutrition, physical activity, and positive community. If you got invited to this event by someone in this community, know that they are filled with the positivity to help you live a healthier life. So today I'd like to share the power of practicing self-love when overcoming any kind of adversity, such as those that Haivel will be sharing and myself. And I can attest to its power because it's helped me remain cancer-free for now 17 years. Actually on May 15th, I will be celebrating that. And you see here. All right, so what is self-love? According to the World Wide Web, self-love is regard for one's own well-being and happiness. And I found this wonderful quote that brought this definition completely together. It was when I stopped searching for home within others and lifted the foundations of home within myself, I found there were no more intimate than those between mind, no more roots more intimate than those between mind and body that have decided to be whole. And this is from Rupi Kaur. You can master the art of self-love when you know your own self-value. So here are some pictures. I'd like us to play a little activity here. And what I'd like to do is allow us to take a minute to identify how you might have engaged in activities of self-love in the past. So please share in the comments which of these images speak self-love to you. I'm gonna give you about 30 seconds. So if you guys wanna put in the comments, And we might, let me see here, the chat. Okay, I'm able to see it. Awesome. Oh yeah, C is a very popular one. <laughs> very cool. Awesome, awesome. 
Yeah, see, see the big winner. Perfect. So whether it be playing with your children and enjoying a cup of coffee or a cup of tea, soaking in a bath, enjoying a delicious meal or walking by the beach, there's so many ways to practice self-love. And I encourage all of those type of activities, but do of course that that sits well with you and makes you feel the fullest. It's important to practice it and it's important to reflect on it. And that's why I thought showing these images just kind of brings a reminder of how we can engage in the practice of self-love. All right, so Eat, Pray, Love is one of my favorite romance movies. And it's about Liz Gilbert, played by Julia Roberts, who thought she had everything she wanted in life, a home, a husband, and a successful career. Yet deep inside, she was unfulfilled. So then she chooses to get divorced and faces a turning point where she finds that she is more confused about what is important to her. Daring a step out of her comfort zone, Liz embarks on a quest of self-discovery that takes her to Italy, India, and Bali, engaging in activities such as eating, praying, and finding love again. From this movie, I pulled some of my all-time favorite quotes that speak volumes on self-love, and I'd like to share those with you. So one of the first ones, the chaos we endure ruin is the road to transformation. Vela and I experienced heart-wrenching trials and tribulations that required us to battle for our survival. And yet, if you'd ask us whether we change our past, the answer would always be no, because of how it led us to the road to healthy transformation. Be prepared for endless waves of transformation. Life is a journey that gives us the ability to experience the waves of transformation. So take advantage to get on your surfboard and ride the waves and welcome the waves of transformation. You need to learn to select your thoughts the way you select your clothes every day. And I purposely put in parentheses, Richard speaking to groceries because I love in the movie, if you've seen the movie, how he references Julia Roberts um, as groceries. So with this quote, you have to keep in mind that having a, mind, a positive mindset and attitude is vital to practicing self-care. And it is a choice that we must make each and every day. The only thing permanent in life is family. So this one at times gets taken for granted. Family is family no matter what. They are going to be there. It is important to engage in self-love and take care of yourself so that you could be a more present parent, sibling, spouse, team member, boss, you name it. Knowing that you have that support system and family is just priceless. So take that time for some self-love. Stop trying and surrender. This falls in line with me as let go and let God. Let's face it, some things are just out of our control. So when you practice placing fears, worries, and anxieties in the hands of our Heavenly Father, He will care for things in His own divine way. Discern and last, believe in love again. Love is the universal language of peace, healing, hope. Love can come at all stages of life. Allowing it to exist in your life welcomes opportunities for joy to blossom from the inside out. So here are my takeaway tips. Have an appetite for life. Stop waiting for something. Just do it, like Nike says. Express gratitude often. Stay surrounded with a positive community, like those on this wonderful call. Pray, meditate. 
read the Bible and self-development books. Let go of regret and forgive. You'd be surprised how much more that is for your own self-love than for anyone else. Remain mindfully present when spending time with others you care about. And last, see your mind and body as a temple of God that he masterfully created just for you. You see, all these tips touch upon the three most important areas of life, which are mind, body, and soul. Last year, I was interviewed by the blog author of the I'm Loving Me project, and she asked me, how do you think self-love plays a role in success? To which my response was, self-love is an anchor that keeps us grounded in Christ. And what I mean by this is that when I saw myself loving every bit of who he created me to be, the hurdles became the staircases. Heartache became humbling times of self-evaluation and fears became opportunities for excitement. Love to love yourself in order to live life fully. So here's some handy digital tools to help you practice self-love. And I hope that they are as inspiring to you as they have been to me. Love you all. And thank you for allowing me to share. You want to tell us about the insight timer and the- Sure. I don't can. So I'll bring the screen back up. <laughs> Sorry. No, no, it's fine. So um, from current, okay. Current. Anyway, it's right. That's right. So Insight Timer has guided meditation, um, music, uh, inspiring, like it, it's got inspiring videos, leap assistant uh, scripts, et cetera. And then of course, the Holy Bible has your daily devotionals. And I love Wool Maze because Wool Maze has many, many quotes on self-love, self-care, empowerment, um, it even has sometimes yoga videos. So if you're ever looking for things to keep on your phone and handy, even like the app Calm, I should have added that on there, helps you to breathe. These are just like nifty tools that we can carry along with us. Awesome. Great. Thank you. Yes, I have the I am. I think it's called I am where it just pops up. I am powerful or I am calm or whatever, you know, it's great throughout the day. It's like, oh, okay, I am. <laughs> Thank you, Alicia. That was awesome. I loved it. And I love um, that you said select your thoughts, you know, select your thoughts. You have a choice and that's part of self-care. I love a lot of what you said. So um, I'm sure everybody else did too. So give some love to Alicia in the chat. Thank you so much. And um, now we're going to go to Vela. Bella, we already did your intro, so you are welcome to, to just get started, share your story, share any tips. Um, and I just loved everything you, you mentioned, Alicia. So I think you guys are probably gonna overlap. Yes, most certainly. I thank you, Sharon, for bringing us on together. Alicia, those were some phenomenal tips that I used, but you surely gave me a few nuggets that I will definitely take with me tonight. And it's all about growth. But what I want to say is I thank you guys for logging on. It's so important. It's so important that you go on Facebook and share this because the information is crucial. It's vital. You know, we're living in a time right now with, you know, what's going on with the pandemic and we are finding out that we're not super women, you know, we're vulnerable and stuff is happening and we have to grab hold of ourselves and cultivate a lifestyle, especially for our children. And tonight, I actually had a script written down. I'm not going there. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to get raw. I'm going to tell you a lot. I'm going to invite you into my heart and really tell you the story. It's not a fact of making you scared, but it's the possibility it can happen. And you're being hit with a disability or a life-threatened heart attack, a stroke. It may be your only warning. So tonight, if you have any questions, you go ahead, you put those on. Like I said, share the information because it's vital that we get the word out, especially we as women. I know there's some men on here and I'm going to address you guys also, but we as women, we are the caretakers. 
We are the backbone of the family. And we think about everyone's feeling, emotions, need before we even think of ourselves. I mean, and gosh, damn, we go to the bathroom and we're still <laughs> not in a place where we can be alone and isolated for ourselves. But do you know self-care and self-love is important? I didn't understand that. It took me to a journey that we talked about, Elsa talked about a gift. Didn't understand it, but now I know. So as I talk, I'm gonna give you some pointers, but most of all, I'm gonna give you some arsenal to use because tonight it's a call of action. The information is necessary. The means to act is now. The why, because our lives depend on it. The lives of our family depend on it. And if we're not whole, we're of no use. At least in my case, that happened. I was going about life, living for the Joneses, I was busy doing everything for everyone else. I was in school at that point. I'm a mother, soccer mom, you know, taxi driver, you name it. That S on my chest was so, it was there. And that's all I breathe and live for. You know, we have these roles, these titles, a sister, a friend, a BFF, a wife, a mother, even Ethan's mom. We carry all of these roles. But do we understand that our self-care is necessary? Like I said, a few years ago, six years ago, actually, it's going to be a, um, seven years next year, I mean, next month. I was at work and I was having this headache. Didn't understand it, but I started getting lethargic, hint. And I told my boss I had a headache. And I'm like, no, I'm just gonna go home because I started reading numbers backwards and I was on my computer. And I went home and I had this really bad headache. I don't know how I made it home, but I stopped at my friend's house who lived down the street because they didn't have an aspirin with me. This is just how severe my headache was. And um, I stopped her house and asked for an aspirin and we talked to it and I said, I gotta go. And so I went home and I went to sleep. And my daughter came home at three o'clock. And immediately I jumped out of bed because she woke me up because I had a test to take. I had to cook dinner and get my son ready for practice. And I started cooking and, you know, multitask and ask her how her day was going. And she's talking to me and she says, wait a second, mom, you sound funny. I'm like, I'm okay, I'm cooking, getting stuff ready. And she actually called my sister and says, mom sounds funny. And I'm like, nah, leave it alone. And my sister says, no, call the emergency, call them right now. And the EMS came. They took my blood pressure, they took some vitals. And he told me, he says, we gotta go to the hospital. I was too busy. Life was planned. You see, it didn't fit into my time frame. I refused to go to the emergency room. I told the EMS, no, I'm not going. So I went about cooking dinner, get my son ready for practice and I had to go out to school. And I noticed that my legs started to get limp and I didn't pay attention to it. I just thought, you know, I'll take an aspirin, I'll take a pill, hint. And my husband came home and he noticed it also. And he said, no, we're going to the hospital. I was angry because this was not in my plan. I had my day schedule, my night schedule, and this just did not fit into my plan. We drove to the emergency room and I was pissed off. <laughs> and when we went in, immediately the nurse came out, did a quick, quick, like a second triage and she pushed this button. And a whole team came and I'm like, what the heck is going on? And she said, possible stroke. It got quiet and I'm like, okay, what is this? What's going on? Granted years before I was diabetic, wasn't treating myself right. I had sciatic nerve issues, didn't go to the doctor. You see, I was young. Stuff like that happened to old people. I'm young, that's not gonna happen to me. At least that's what I thought in my head. 
I was young. I didn't have to go and get an annual. Although my doctor told me years ago that my A1C was 12.5. And she told me, says, you know, you're in the danger zone. Who has a stroke at 30 years old? I was living my best life. And yes, the outside to me was phenomenal. It wasn't right. I wasn't really taking care of me. I was loving something. I'm not sure what it was, but I wasn't truly loving myself. And soon as the triage and the, the team, because you know it's a team they have to call to jump in and they wires are going this way, this is going that way, this shot sign, this paper, and my husband's looking at me, I'm like, what the hell? And I'm like, what do I do now? And it got real. And um, they went, took some tests, MRIs, every test, a manual brain scan. And actually during the process, I started feeling the symptoms because one part of my body actually went limb where I couldn't even hold my head up, my hand up. I couldn't get out of bed. And I'm sitting in this emergency room and I'm like, what the heck is going on? And they put me into a room. And a day later, actually, everything was going fine as far as because they gave me the um, shots. There was a treatment because when you're in an active stroke, if you get this treatment within a time span, they could reverse some of the effects. Thank goodness I got to the emergency room before that three hour span. And I sat there and it didn't show that I had a stroke because they thought it was a TIA at one point. And they were going to release me, although I couldn't move, I couldn't talk in my mouth. You couldn't see. I smile now and you'll notice my smile, I'll smile for you. This is residual from my stroke. I'm not symmetric because there's still some identifications and I don't smile because of it sometime now, but I'm embracing me. And so they were gone to release me and my sister came in and they call her Judy the Bulldog. And she's like, no way, heck no, you're not releasing her. You're gonna run some more tests. And her, her daughter actually is a lawyer. So she started getting really loud with them. And come to find out they did an actual another um, CAT scan and then they saw the bleed. It was a slow bleed. And it was confirmed that I actually had a systemic stroke. And they took me, after that I did some more um, physical therapy and I went to a rehab. Now you think of a stroke rehab, you think of a place for debilitating older people here, I'm 30 something in a stroke ward with people in their 70s and 60s. I was put in a corner, didn't know where to go or how to get myself out of. I couldn't move that much. You know, there was a regimen PT. There was all type of stuff that I had to do, exercise. I'm even nutritional specialist, a behavior as far as eating, um, OT. And it was a series of stuff. And I sat down there and I cried. And I thought about, I was thinking about my life and I cried. And so a few days later, um, actually 14 days later, I was released home. I couldn't move much. The basic needs, I had to have a nurse and my children take care of. And I thank God for my brothers, my siblings, and my daughter, especially her and my husband. Oh my gosh. Because when you think you got it together and you're so used to being independent and now your life has changed. And I get so emotional because who wants people to do the basic stuff for you? And I had to let go, truly let go and understand that I was there, but the thoughts weren't coming to me. I wanted to move, but I couldn't. And so I sat down and I cried and I prayed to God. And a, a week later, I was having, I woke, I was in bed, propped up. My husband's like so seeing him, and I was like, at nights I would actually tell him, babe, check, tug me to see if, to make sure I'm okay. Cause I felt like I would die in my sleep. And so I started having these pains, this lightning bolt, it was come. And then it would go, it would come and go. And I'm like, this is different. Now I did have sciatic nerve, which I think was misdiagnosed. It felt like that, but it was coming from my chest. And then my arm radiated. I started feeling something in my arm, another hand. And I'm like, no, we got to go to the emergency room again. And an angel, they say the ER doctor, went to the same guy and he says, why is she back? So at this point, now they started doing EKG 
they did all type of tests. They did the, the um, in my, my neck, the vein test they did also, and an echocardiogram. And it got real. In the space of an hour, I was transported to Broward General Hospital. And in the space of 30 minutes, I was on the cath lab. And it was a simple procedure, they said, and they wouldn't tell me. There was a lot of stuff going on around. Lights were moving, people were coming in and out. And I was like, what do I do? And so I went in the cat lab and it was cold and they put me on this machine, the catheterization, and they put this thing in my leg and they went up to my, to look at the veins in my heart and my arteries. I don't know if you guys know about what is um, a widow maker or even the arteries, ventricles or right ventricles and atriums and stuff like that. But my widow maker was 99% blocked. And I actually had an event on the table. So they, it was quick and the, you know, I was, okay, is it done? Okay, we're good, we're good. And I came out and four doctors, I would never forget them. He came and I'm like, okay, what's going on? He says, we have to have emergency stat. I looked up at my husband and I looked up at the light in the room and I'm like, what do I do? How did I get here? How do I find my way back? Help me. And I was like in a state of shock. And I looked in his eyes and he was trying to be really there for me in that moment. And I felt it. So in a space of that, I was put up into a ward getting prepped for open heart surgery, a quadruple bypass. Actually, four to five of the major arteries that carry blood to my heart was blocked. And my widow maker was 99% blocked. I went up to the room and as I started calling my priests, my family, my sisters, and on the bed there, I had another event. And they had to take me up to ICU at this point. And within a matter of hours of signing papers, get my children to the hospital to make my final wishes being prepped for a surgery. You see, doctors like to go on a patient when they know exactly what they're dealing with, not an emergency situation. So they were getting familiar with my case and my body and teams of coming in and out of what they're gonna do and how they're gonna do it. And I didn't understand. I just wanted my kids there. I wanted my pastor there, my husband was right there. And I was being prepped for quadruple bypass surgery at 30 something years old. And I remember waking up that morning, I didn't sleep that much because the OR, you know, ICU. And I remember my husband giving me a kiss as they rolled me in and I remember just being cold. I woke up, I'm not sure exactly when. And I remember machines going off and there was something in my throat. There was a needle in my neck um, there was all type of machines everywhere, cords, leads, everything. I couldn't move. And every time I would wake up, I would notice that a nurse would run into the room and I was boom, back out. And I guess they were sedating me because of the what was going on. And life got so real. Being so close to death in ICU. And I talk about and I, it, the scars that it's left me with as far as, you know, if somebody goes into a crash or um, whatever they call it, code blue, and you think of it as a quick thing. Sometimes they're 30 minutes, they're working on a patient, a person trying to survive, trying to revive them. And here I am at death's door, trying to put the pieces of my life that took me from where I was of being self-secured, self-assured, being my big black self and thinking I was doing what was right. It wasn't right. I was caring for everybody else, but not myself. You see, self-care is essential. Self-care is necessary. I wouldn't want to wish my experience of being so close to dead door in understanding that there is choices in life 
that I could have made, that it could have propelled my life into a different standard of perhaps looking at my weight issue, treating the diabetes and taking my medication, refraining, refraining from eating carbohydrates, turning my plate around so it looks a little greener, looking at portion size and completely take the soda out of diet. Didn't do it. And I used to love those Friday night ribs. What was it doing for me? Nothing. I was in a place where I was not in control. I was put in a corner, didn't understand why. So I got up with the help of my family, help of God, try to find a sense back to me. And you see me here today, I may be looking cute and fly in a nice hair and makeup. I'm forever changed. You see, I have to take a nap at three o'clock. I'm normally in bed at 7.30 because my life is altered. And so when I come on, I'm living from a defensive mode. And I pray that you guys work on a proper offense. You see, my life is altered. Today is an opportunity for you to change the trajectory of your life. And not only for yourself. You know, I talk about generational behaviors. People talk about generational curses. Prayer plus works. Come on. Yes, we have DNA issues. But do you know that you can change it to some extent by the foods you eat, by the stuff you allow into your being, especially for our children, as far as breaking the mold? You see, I look at my children, I says, you know what, my past does not have to be their future. And I understand why I'm in the position I'm in right now is to speak to you. Yeah, you. Who thinking, you know, you went to your doctor or you don't have time, or it's not necessary, or, oh, I'm too young, I'm too busy. I can schedule that next week. An illness, a heart attack, a stroke can be your only warning. So we have to pay attention to the warning signs. Now I know them, I didn't know them back then. We have to be so vigilant when it comes to knowing our numbers. Granted, you know, you may look good on the outside. Yes, put on that red bottom and that nice jeans and that nice shirt. But do you know your numbers? Do you know your A1C? Do you know your cholesterol level? Do you know your BMI? Seriously, do you know? Homework, please get a copy of your blood work. Understand your numbers. If you don't know it, get to know it because when you know better, you do better. So my road, like I said, it's not easy. It's a battle every day. And since the open heart surgery, the quadruple bypass, there's been a few other revision surgeries. You see, because I started living life. I was on 21 different medication. Yes. Doctors intervene and fix the situation, but it didn't happen up here. There's something up here that needed to change and I didn't understand it. It's my whole world needed to change. It's the people I hung around, the food I ingest, the information I allowed in, sense of community. You see, we can go all on ourselves individually, but when we get together, corporately and collaboratively, we are stronger. As individuals, we're limited. As a conglomerate, we are so powerful to understand that within you, you have the strength. If I can go, and I didn't know how strong I was, I did not know. The tenacity and the boldness, but you see it came from desperation. Heck yeah, I wanted to live. And how do I do that? Whatever I was doing after my open heart surgery wasn't working. I tried to look on blogs, Facebook. I was practically, me and Judy was Dr. WebMD for a point. 
trying to find ways and clues, going to my doctors, consuming my 25 different medication on a daily basis. Didn't want to sleep. Couldn't sleep because my chest and I show my scars because it's my honor. You see, my scars don't define me. It just tells a story. Mostly my battles, but my victory. Because in my scars lies strength. Strength that I didn't know I have. Yes, this is definitely S on my chest that I wear bold. And that S is to tell you tonight that you're capable, you're able to defy. Now, how do we change? It starts within the mind. You see, I was introduced to a world and you know, Lisa, thank goodness for her, my sister. And she introduced me to Michelle and T and my saving grace. I was longing to get back, to be that beautiful wife, to be that soccer mom on the field, to be that friend, just to gossip and shoot the breeze was, here I was living, but not living. You know what I was doing? Finding my obituary. I was. After my heart attack, I spent months thinking of how I wanted my funeral to be. And I'm being candid with you guys. Yes, I did. Because I didn't see a way out. I did not see a way out. Every time I turned around, there was a test that came back weird. Back in the hospital. Go to a new specialist. This test, angiogram. Learning about all this stuff I didn't know. I gave up but I wanted to live for my children and my husband. So I explored different avenues. I look at ways to make myself better. I look for, I even went to a free and charm and tell you the truth to tell me something that I didn't know. And I didn't know, I wanted to live. I was afraid, I was vulnerable. Thinking of how did I get here? How did I box myself in? How do I find a way out? How do I become whole again for my husband and my children? And I just thought, so Michelle invited, I mean, Michelle at her house, she started talking about fruits and vegetables at this point. I'm like, okay, how much? Didn't care. I was not gonna live. So I might as well do it. Yes, that's my thought. Was, it was sad, but that's where I was. I was living my best life trying to die every day because that's what I thought my future held. And I held on to one more night. You see when you're sick, you know, when you get the cold, you notice that night seems to last so long. But I knew when the sunrise, it was another day. And I still have that, 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 that childlike thing. Oh, it's a new day. Okay, what do we have to do? Yes. But understand every day is not giving. The urgency is now. So I started consuming fruits and vegetables. <laughs> a simple concept, y'all. And I started going, I started getting with community, feed myself, edifying myself, not only with food, but the consumption of people that are motivated. You know, look at Joy, she was a runner. Cynthia, a brilliant mermaid. You know, Alicia doing her gardening. You know, Michelle just being a leader. You know, Sonia just being a vegetarian. T, just being who she is. And I locked on with these ladies because I felt a heartbeat. You see, I didn't feel my heartbeat, but I looked at them in our group and I saw the life that they lived. And then I had a possibility, hey, wait a second. Hey, I can try this. I can do this. I can attempt to do this. So I started taking my fruits and vegetables. I started eating right. And then I noticed something started to happen. My cravings changed. See fruits and vegetables, you know, talk about that gut bacteria started to change. I started feeling good because now I was taking care of me, started going in the sun. And actually when I started walking first, the, the, which is so weird, I used to 
my goal in life was to wake up to see the sunrise. And then I put a chair in front of my house to watch the sunrise. And that chair became a portable chair. And I started going for walks. And when I got tired, I pulled it out and people looked at me weird on the street. Yes, I did. I sat on the street. It's okay. But I look up at that sunrise and it was so different every day. And I started talking to God, develop a relationship. And that one block became two. Now, some days I can't. Some days, yep, up on it. But it's so important that we live in the moment, consuming, edifying your soul and treating yourself right. Inviting a simple concept of fruit and vegetables and community into your life. Living. How do you start? Where do you start? One simple change. Today or tonight is a new night. It's a new day starts tomorrow. The urgency is now. Here, whatever you do now, kind of set up your future. It's not yesterday. It's fine to glance at the past. It's not okay to live there. Whatever you do in this present moment propels your future. So it's not worrying about your future. It's taking care of the one step every day. Understanding that community, you know, God is it for me, whoever is it for you. And living in the moment, people say, I'm happier now. And, you know, I used to cry to God, oh, why me? Why, why me? And he said, why not you? <laughs> I'm like, what? Wait a second. So I've been given this platform and it's not for me. I want you to take away from my story tonight that you too have the willpower to change. Like I said, I'm not where I need to be in my health journey. Granted, I go to my doctors, I get my lab works, there are setbacks, there's some stuff that my, you know, I'm dealing with an issue of heart failure. And that's something that I'm controlling to, you know, with medication eating, which is helping me so much. And I haven't told anybody re in reference to that or the heart failure issue, but it's okay. It's okay. I understand my body's a bit damaged, but every day is a fight. And I'm going out swinging, y'all. And how do we do that? By incorporating real foods. I started a gardening from actually two potted plants on my patio. Now you can't tell me I don't have a garden of eating in my backyard. <laughs> and we eat from that. Even that tower garden is just so awesome to just see food grow, to edify my soul, to take it in, and just gardening alone. You see Juice Plus community, love yourself event, and the takeaway that I want to challenge you with is a call of action. Call somebody you don't know and share the information. Introduce fruits and vegetables. Whoever invited you tonight, really start that conversation. Not, oh, I'll watch that video tomorrow, next week. <clears throat> no. You may not have that chance or that opportunity. The urgency is now. So through my scars, my victory, my battles, my losses, I understand. So if you're going through something right now, you've been diagnosed with diabetes, hypertension, cholesterol issues. This is not a time to stick your head in the sand. It's time to get proactive. How do you do that? Now, reach out. Reach out. Help is available. There's avenues and the people who invited you tonight to find those avenues. It's all about taking control. So tonight, I'm just going to leave you with a little bit of heart help. And I'm inviting you into my heart making that heart connection, understanding that our heart is vital. And you know, we, you know, it's about protecting our hearts. And you think about the body, right? And you know, there's the rib cage and the sternum that protects our heart, that delicate organ in our body that needs to breathe, that needs life. And we don't take care of it in the physical, spiritual, emotional, and now. And how dare we do that? 
you can't live broken. Your heart wants to be free. <laughs> and how do we free it up? By arming ourselves with the information, exploring new possibilities, eating real foods and vegetables, exploring drinking more water, edifying the soul by bringing community in. It's so vital. You see, my scars don't define me. It's just a journey that shows my battles, my weaknesses, but above all, it's an avenue to teach you that your life does not have to be mine. So I urge you to start the conversation today. And I thank you guys. Any comments? Go ahead, put those in. Sharon, are there any comments? Um, go ahead. And I'm done. I just want to make that heart connection. I hope it was heartfelt. And I just thank you guys for listening. Oh, yeah. I mean, you've got lots of comments that are very heartfelt. And yes, I agree with Michelle. I just saw it a second ago. You are a totally different person today from the one she met four years ago. And me too. You are live. You are. I didn't even talk about that. I lost so much weight in the process. <laughs> well, it's not just that. Like you said, you kind of were, I don't know whether you were depressed or what, but you just were just going through the motions, I think. Just going through the motions. And, and you mentioned before that you were on over 20 medications. I don't know if you still are on, you know, a bunch or not, but we've seen the transformation. Yes, you've lost weight, but you've also, you're so inspirational and so full of joy for every day. Like you're talking about with the sunrise and everything. So um, we've just, we've seen that. We've seen the glory, you know, that, that you emanate and we appreciate that. So, wow, um, yeah. I'm pretty sure I'm going to have a hard time following that. <laughs> so thank you, Bella. Oh my goodness. So um, I'll see if I can, can sum this up for tonight. I mean, she, when, when you give Bella the stage, you just don't know what's going to happen. And I totally appreciate that. That's why I invited you, Bella, because I know that you are inspired um, by God as to what to share really. So um, that was an amazing story and that makes us think, that makes us think, what are our next steps, you know, in our community, what it, she's talking about is our Juice Plus community, where we are all about making simple changes. So get with the person who invited you to say, okay, what, what's a good first step? You know, what's a good first step? Because it's, you know, it's not easy to change a bunch of habits. Like she was lost as to what she should do. And this gave her hope that there were tools that would help her. And a lot of times people don't really know how to eat healthy. So we have tools that actually kind of intervene that, that you don't have to eat so healthy at first. It really kind of reprograms your body um, and changes your metabolism, things like that. And I know that, that Sandy wanted me to share for Heart Month about one of our heart studies, you know, and Vela mentioned the, the fruits and the vegetables. We have fruit, vegetable, and berry blends, okay? Um, and they did a study because this is a real world study where they took people to a fast food restaurant. I won't say what it was Two hash browns, two breakfast sandwiches, I'll say, so I don't give it away. Um, and they took people there and they measured their blood vessel constriction. So this is something we learned in our community that after you have a high fat meal, your blood vessels can go from being totally open to constricted 40 to 60 percent so many times people um well a lot of times when people have a heart incident it might be after a high fat meal it might be after a high fat meal or strenuous exercise or also going out in the sun like if you do all three in the the hot sun of florida not a good idea so when you have a high fat meal your blood vessels are constricted so they looked at okay well we can't really get people to be too compliant with fruits and vegetables so let's see if these fruit, vegetable, berry capsules make a difference, which are the next best thing. And that's the tagline for Juice Plus. It's been around for 25 years. Um, and they've proven research to be able to say that tagline. So they said, okay, we're going to take people, have that high fat meal. And these are professors, you know, that do research studies. And they're like, we're going to have that high fat meal because they had seen right across the street that these people were having the high fat meal anyway. So they went ahead and tested them baseline measures to see what does that high fat meal do? Well, the high fat meal constricts your blood vessels 40 to 60% four to six hours. 
So there's this window of terrible opportunity, right? That you need to be careful if you're going to have a high fat meal. That was a 900 calorie, 50 grams of fat meal. And so um, what they did was they had a placebo group. That was one group. They had a fruit and veggie group because that was the um, that was the the baseline product, the basic product. That was fruits and veggies, red and green we call it, or fruits and veggies. Then the third group had fruits, veggies, berries, and berries are made specifically for heart and circulation. So they wanted to see, well, do berries make a difference, you know? Um, and so they all went and they had their pills, the placebo group, the fruit and veggie group, and the fruit, veggie, berry group. They went and they went about their life. They took their pills for just 28 days, okay? They came back, had that same high fat meal at that same fast food restaurant. They measured their blood vessel constriction. Um, and I'm trying to remember because I'm in front of all of you guys. I can't remember the exact word. Um, and you guys can put it in the chat. I know some of you know this study. I want to say the brachial artery. Um, and so they measured that and they um, looked at the placebo group. Well, there was no change. They had the same high fat meal, no change. 40 to 60% constricted, four to six hours, okay? So there was no placebo effect. The second group, the fruit and veggie group, there was actually 62% less constriction. That was awesome, and that was significant in the peer-reviewed medical journal. The third group, the fruit, veggie, berry group, so they took two fruit, two vegetable, two berry capsules um, for 28 days, it said it basically eliminated the detrimental effect of the high fat meal. And so um, why is that? Well, it was the rest of the rainbow. So the fruit and veggie did a lot. Um, then the fruit veggie berry did more. So more matters. Like Vela says, you want to eat your fruits and veggies and berries. They all matter. Like the berries are good for the brain. They're good for circulation. The greens are good for the eyes, good for iron. You know, all the colors matter. So that mattered, more mattered, and also Juice Plus works. Okay, so those are a couple things you could take from that. And you can look up that study. It's called Big Mac Attack on WebMD. Um, it's in the Journal of the American College of Cardiology, and I'm mentioning it because it is Heart Month, and we do want you to have self-love and also um, take care of your heart for sure. But take care of your whole body. You've got some really great information tonight. Like, what's a great next step for you? Download one of the apps that Alicia mentioned. That, that was awesome. You gave us some great tools for that. Um, get in community with us. We're all about making simple changes. The, our healthiest customers are ourselves because we're in it. We're learning from nutritionists, um, naturopathic doctors, uh, infectious disease doctors. So we're always learning like little hacks and things. And we have some good Facebook groups that you can be in. So um, yeah, Michelle says that's her favorite study. And so um, Alicia gave us the good information. So I do have a couple winners and you people put in the chat whatever else you want to say tonight while I tell you the winners. I used random.org, okay? And I don't know either one of these people, so I'm not biased. Okay, so, so now you guys know. If you know me, you did not win, sorry. Okay, iPhone Karina, you'll receive a little gift certificate from Amazon if you let us know your address so get with the person who invited you and mandy joy's iphone okay thank you you guys are winners so let's see you i'm gonna put you on gallery take off my spotlight and let's see who you are okay let's see let me see where you are say hi again oh, hello joy. hi mandy joy and then iphone karina i see your screen's off but congratulations and so thank you um, buy something to go love yourself, <laughs> some, some kind of self-love thing, the bubble bath, for the, maybe the bubble bath. Um, anyway, so thank you to Alicia and Vela. Did I miss anything, you guys? I think that was it, right? Okay, this will be streamed um, in Plant-Based Power. It's a public Facebook page. You guys can do a watch party for your friends and family. We're all about inspiring healthy living around the world. That is our mission with the Juice Plus Company. We accept you no matter where you are on the spectrum of how well you eat. We want to help you to just make simple changes. All right. Have a good night, guys. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. That was incredible. Yes. That was good.
Thank you for inspiring <laughs> us, Alicia and Vela. Thank you and good night, everyone. It was wonderful. <laughs> yeah, I see that. Trick. I'm sorry, I was <laughs> muted. So I was talking to myself. Thank you very much for sharing that and God bless you. Bless you. Good night, guys. Thank you. <laughs> you ladies told a beautiful story, very touching, and and thank you for opening up so personally. Mm. Love being a part of this group. Mm -hmm. Awesome. For joining Samantha. <laughs> <laughs> All right.